In the vastness of space, where stars flicker like distant lighthouses against the eternal night, Captain Jeremy Castor of the human exploration ship, the Voyager, patrolled the edges of known space. The sector known as the Fringe was notorious for its uncharted asteroids and the occasional rogue pirate, making it a dangerous but necessary route for explorers. On this particular journey, as the ship sailed through a particularly desolate stretch of space, the Voyager's communication officer, Talia, intercepted an unusual signal. It was weak and intermittent, like a heartbeat struggling to persist. After enhancing the signal, it became clear. It was a distress call. Jeremy, a seasoned explorer with a sharp intuition for trouble, ordered an immediate course change, directing the ship towards the origin of the signal. As they approached, the source revealed itself. A small, sleek vessel, unlike any design familiar to the Human Space Authority. It bore the marks of recent combat, scorched hull, breached compartments, and the lingering aura of a recent plasma fire. The Voyager maneuvered closer, deploying its docking module under Jeremy's precise command. His crew, suited for spacewalk, entered the damaged vessel, moving through its eerily silent corridors. The ship was alien, its design both elegant and functional, with panels of unknown symbols and soft, ambient lighting now flickering with the ship's dying energy. In the central control room, they found her, Lirail. She was collapsed over a console, her skin shimmering with a natural bioluminescence that pulsed weakly. Her features were delicate and distinctly non-human, with elongated limbs and large, expressive eyes that fluttered open as the rescue team approached. Lirael was weak but conscious. She managed to explain that her ship was ambushed by pirates, who seemed to have known exactly when and where to strike. They had disabled her ship and left her for dead, taking whatever they found valuable. Jeremy, listening intently, noted the strategic details. This attack was no random encounter. As they brought Lirail aboard the Voyager, Jeremy's medic, Dr. Reyna, administered first aid tailored for Lirail's physiology, which she explained in halting human dialect. Her recovery was crucial, not only for her health, but for the invaluable information she possessed about her attackers and potentially their motives. Once aboard the Voyager and safely away from the scene of the attack, Jeremy initiated a debrief. Lirail, still frail but recovering, shared more about her identity and her mission. She was a scientist from Silvora, a planet renowned for its advancements in stellar propulsion technologies, a likely motive for the pirate attack. The captain and his crew knew the importance of this mission had shifted. It was no longer just a patrol, but a rescue that could lead to significant alliances and possibly unveil a network of interstellar piracy affecting the fragile peace of the fringe sector. With a new resolve, Jeremy set the course, not just to return Lirail home, but to uncover the depth of the conspiracy that targeted her, marking the beginning of an unexpected journey across the stars. As Lirail's condition stabilized, she became more lucid and shared invaluable insights about her technology and the circumstances of her attack. Jeremy, always attentive, realized that her knowledge could reshape the power dynamics in the fringe. With the Red Nebula gang now a direct threat to his mission, he knew they had to be cautious. The Voyager's crew, now alert to the danger, observed increased communication chatter, suggesting that the pirates were still on their trail. Jeremy decided to leverage this situation. Using a decoy signal, he mimicked their ship's energy signature to mislead their pursuers. The plan was risky, but it bought them time. Time that was critical to formulating a better strategy. Lirael, grateful for Jeremy's intervention and determined to prevent her technology from falling into the wrong hands, offered to share her advanced knowledge with the crew. Her technology included enhancements to the ship's defense systems and propulsion capabilities, which could prove essential if the pirates caught up to them. Together, Jeremy and Lirael worked in the Voyager's engineering bay, integrating her alien technology with the human systems. This collaboration wasn't just about upgrading the ship, it was about building trust. The crew watched as their captain and their unexpected guest brought their worlds together, piece by piece, circuit by circuit. As they neared the completion of their upgrades, 
A warning signal blared throughout the ship. The decoy had been discovered, and the pirates were adjusting their course, now heading directly for the Voyager. With little time to spare, Jeremy and Lirael initiated the new propulsion system. The ship's engines roared to life, glowing with an ethereal blue light that pulsed rhythmically, a visual testament to the fusion of human and silveran technology. With the pirates closing in, Jeremy took the helm, his hands steady despite the rising tension. The Voyager shot forward, its speed enhanced by Lirael's modifications, slicing through the cosmos towards the asteroid belt of Orion, a place where navigation was perilous, but where Jeremy hoped the complex terrain would give them the advantage. As asteroids loomed ahead, massive and menacing, the crew tensed. Lirael, now acting not only as a scientist but as a navigator, assisted Jeremy in plotting a course. Their ship weaved through the rocky maze, the pirates' ships struggling to keep pace, hindered by the Voyager's unexpected agility. In a daring move, Jeremy steered the ship into a particularly dense cluster of asteroids. The pirates, too committed to their chase, followed. The Voyager emerged from the other side, scraping past a colossal asteroid with mere meters to spare. Behind them, a less fortunate pirate ship misjudged its path and collided with a massive rock, erupting into a fiery explosion. Breathing a momentary sigh of relief, Jeremy and his crew realized they had momentarily evaded their pursuers, but at a cost. They were deep in the heart of the asteroid field, with the remaining pirate ships still on their tail and their journey through the dangerous terrain was far from over. With the Red Nebula Gang's remaining ships still in pursuit, the Voyager plunged deeper into the Orion asteroid belt. Jeremy's skill at the helm and Lirail's technological enhancements were tested to their limits as they navigated through increasingly hazardous corridors of tumbling rocks and debris. The upgraded propulsion system allowed the Voyager to execute sharp, evasive maneuvers that the bulkier pirate ships struggled to match. However, the pirates were persistent, and their firepower formidable. Laser blasts and plasma bolts streaked past, illuminating the dark void with deadly light. Jeremy's crew manned the defensive systems, returning fire and managing to damage one of the chasing ships, causing it to retreat into the shadows of the asteroids. As they dodged and weaved, Lirail pointed out a narrow passage that appeared on her scans, a shortcut that could lead them out of the belt, but was dangerously tight. Trusting her judgment, Jeremy steered the Voyager towards it. The passage was a tight squeeze, the ship's exterior scraping against jagged rocks, sending sparks flying in all directions. Inside the ship, the tension was palpable. Every crew member was at their station, their eyes glued to their screens or out the windows, watching the rocky landscape whip by at breakneck speed. Lirail, meanwhile, continued to adjust the ship's energy output, optimizing speed while maintaining shield integrity. Emerging from the passage, they found themselves momentarily in open space, but the relief was short-lived. The pirate leader, cunning and relentless, had anticipated their move and cut off their path with his ship, larger and more heavily armed than the others. With no way around, Jeremy made a split-second decision. He ordered the crew to prepare for a frontal assault. Using a maneuver Lirael suggested, they converted the Voyager's auxiliary power to boost their forward shields temporarily. As they sped towards the pirate ship, it unleashed a barrage of fire. The Voyager's enhanced shields held, absorbing the energy attacks with a shimmering force field. Just meters away from a collision, Jeremy executed a sharp upward pitch. The Voyager soared over the pirate ship, close enough to see the surprised faces of its crew through the viewing ports. As they passed over, Lirail activated a newly installed weapon, a high-frequency pulse emitter that disrupted electronic systems. The pirate ship's systems faltered, its engines stuttered, and it began to drift helplessly. With the primary threat neutralized, Jeremy didn't pause to celebrate. He knew other pirates might still be lurking in the asteroid field. He set a course for the nearest Allied space station while the crew remained vigilant. As the adrenaline of the chase subsided, Lirael and Jeremy shared a moment in the cockpit, looking out at the stars beyond the asteroid belt. Their mutual respect had deepened through the ordeal, bound by the thrill of survival and victory. Lirael thanked Jeremy for his trust in her technology and her decisions, 
As the Voyager sped away from the dangerous clutches of the Red Nebula gang, Jeremy set a course for the Galian Outpost, a sprawling space station known for its diverse inhabitants and bustling markets. The outpost served as a hub for trade, diplomacy, and sometimes less savory dealings, making it an ideal place to seek allies and gather more information. Upon docking at the station, Jeremy and Lyriel ventured into the crowded, neon-lit corridors. The outpost was a melting pot of cultures and species, from the towering crystalline Arquidians to the swift, shadowy Nocturne traders. Their arrival did not go unnoticed. The presence of a Silveran scientist alongside a human captain piqued the interest of many. Jeremy's first stop was at an old friend's shop, a burly Togrin named Krell who dealt in both information and technology. Krell's gruff demeanor softened when he saw Jeremy. After a brief exchange of pleasantries and news, Jeremy explained their situation and introduced Lyrael. Krell's eyes widened in recognition of her species' renowned intellectual prowess. Lyrael, taking the initiative, shared a concise but urgent summary of their recent encounters with the pirates and the potential threat they posed, not just to her, but to the stability of the region. Krell, well-connected and always keen on maintaining the balance of power, saw an opportunity to help and profit. With Krell's guidance, Jeremy and Lyrael arranged a meeting with a group of mercenaries known as the Starborn Legion, reputed for their skill and discretion. The Legion's leader, a tactical genius named Zan, had a personal vendetta against the Red Nebula gang, whose actions had cost her crew dearly in the past. The meeting took place in a secluded chamber, away from the bustling crowds. Zan, a humanoid with piercing green eyes and a commanding aura, listened intently as Jeremy and Lyria laid out their case. She was skeptical at first, mercenaries often are, but Lyriel's detailed account of the pirates' tactics and the potential technological advancements at stake convinced her of the gravity of the threat. After much deliberation, Zan agreed to an alliance. In exchange for their technological insights and a share of any salvaged pirate tech, the Starborn Legion would lend their combat expertise and additional firepower to Jeremy's mission. It was a pragmatic arrangement, one that would increase their chances of survival and success against a formidable enemy. With the deal struck, the newly formed alliance wasted no time. Zan and her team boarded the Voyager, and together with Jeremy's crew, they began a series of intense training sessions. The Legion brought with them advanced weaponry and tactics, which, when combined with Lyriel's technology, created a potent defensive strategy. As they trained, a bond formed between the crews of the Voyager and the Starborn Legion. Stories were exchanged, and camaraderie grew in the shared goal of taking down a common foe. Lyriel, once a scientist isolated in her laboratory, found herself at the center of a diverse team, her knowledge and bravery universally respected. The training soon paid off. Intelligence gathered by Krell indicated that the Red Nebula gang was regrouping near the binary suns of Zeta Prime, a location known for its harsh solar flares and strategic significance. It was the perfect setting for an ambush, a fact not lost on Jeremy or Zan. With their preparations complete, the Voyager and its new allies set a course for Zeta Prime, ready to confront the Red Nebula gang in what promised to be a pivotal battle. As the ships warped into hyperspace, Jeremy and Lyrael stood side by side, looking out at the stars. As the Voyager and its allies from the Starborn Legion approached the binary suns of Zeta Prime, the tension among the crew and mercenaries thickened. The region's notorious solar flares provided a challenging and dynamic battlefield, one that Jeremy and Zan planned to use to their advantage. Under the harsh light of the twin suns, the pirate fleet appeared, larger and more formidable than before. The Red Nebula gang had not only anticipated their ambush, but had gathered reinforcements. However, Jeremy's alliance had the element of surprise and a plan that hinged on the volatile solar environment. Zan coordinated the attack from the main bridge of the Voyager, while Jeremy piloted the ship closer to the suns, skirting the edge of the flares. Lyrael monitored the solar activity, timing their maneuvers with the eruptions, using the natural chaos as a shield against the pirates' sensors. 
As they closed in, the Voyager and its allied ships released a volley of ionized torpedoes, designed by Lirael to enhance their effectiveness with solar energy. The torpedoes, supercharged by the sun's magnetic fields, streaked towards the pirate fleet, creating dazzling explosions upon impact. Caught off guard, the pirate ships scrambled to retaliate. Their leader, a notorious warlord named Garvin, directed a counterattack, launching a barrage of plasma cannons. The Voyager's shields, reinforced with silver and technology, absorbed the initial onslaught, but it was clear they wouldn't hold under sustained fire. Utilizing the chaos, Zan's mercenaries executed a flanking maneuver. They piloted small, agile fighters that darted through the pirate formation, targeting vulnerabilities that Lirael had identified from her scans of the previous encounters. Their precise, swift strikes took down two pirate vessels, sowing confusion and fear among the remaining attackers. Amidst the battle, a massive solar flare erupted, larger than any Lirael had predicted. She quickly recalibrated the ship's shields to convert the incoming energy into a powerful electromagnetic pulse, EMP. Jeremy gave the order, and Lirael unleashed the EMP at the peak of the flare. The pulse, amplified by the solar energy, swept across the battlefield. Pirate ships, caught in the wave, found their systems overloaded and shut down. Their weapons went silent, their engines stalled, and they drifted helplessly in space. With the pirates neutralized, Jeremy and Zan seized the opportunity. They boarded Garvin's flagship with a select team, including Lirail, who brought a device designed to extract data from the pirates' computers. Amid a tense standoff, they captured Garvin and secured his command center. Lirail connected her device, bypassing the pirates' security protocols. She downloaded crucial data, revealing not only the Red Nebula Gang's network, but also their backers corrupt officials from various governments who had been funding the pirates to destabilize the region. With the data secured and the pirate leader in custody, Jeremy and his allies returned to the Voyager. As they set course back to the Galleon outpost, the mood among the crew was triumphant, but tempered with the knowledge of the challenges ahead. They had won a significant battle, but the war against corruption and instability was far from over. Back on the Voyager, as the adrenaline of battle subsided, Jeremy and Lirail shared a moment overlooking the stars. Their victory had solidified their bond, a combination of mutual respect and burgeoning feelings that neither had fully acknowledged. After their victorious battle at the Binary Suns, Jeremy, Lirail, and the crew of the Voyager, along with their allies from the Starborn Legion, returned to the Galleon outpost. The mood was one of cautious celebration. While they had dealt a significant blow to the Red Nebula gang, the data Lirael extracted from Garvin's flagship painted a more complex and troubling picture. In the relative safety of the outpost, Jeremy and Zan convened a strategy session in the Voyager's conference room. The room buzzed with low conversations as the crew and mercenaries gathered, waiting for the meeting to start. Lirael, her face serious, loaded the decrypted data onto the main screen. The room fell silent as the network of corruption unfurled. High-ranking officials from several planetary systems, including some from Lirael's home planet of Silvora, appeared on the screen, linked to illicit dealings and support for the pirate operations. The implications were grave. What had seemed like isolated acts of piracy were part of a broader scheme to destabilize the region and seize control over its resources. Jeremy, understanding the gravity of the situation, proposed a plan. They would need to expose this conspiracy, not just fight its symptoms. This meant taking the fight beyond the fringe skirmishes into political arenas, where the battle would be for public opinion and legal justice. Lirail suggested they start by informing the planetary councils and the interstellar peacekeeping bodies. But with the corrupted officials embedded deeply within these structures, they needed incontrovertible evidence and a way to present it that bypassed potential sabotage. The team decided to split their efforts. Zan and her mercenaries would continue to keep pressure on the remnants of the Red Nebula gang, preventing them from regrouping and launching counterattacks. Meanwhile, Jeremy, Lirel, and a small team would head to Silvora to confront the Council directly with their findings. The journey to Silvora was tense, 
with every member of the team aware of the stakes. Silvora was a technologically advanced planet, known for its lush landscapes and ethereal cities that seemed to float among the clouds. But beneath this serene surface, political turmoil simmered. Upon arriving, Lirael took the lead. As a respected scientist and now a key figure in uncovering the conspiracy, she was their best chance to gain an audience with the Council. They were granted a hearing due to her status, but the atmosphere was charged with skepticism and veiled threats. Lirael presented the evidence methodically, her voice steady despite the hostile stares of some council members. Jeremy stood by her side, offering support and corroborating the evidence with additional details of their encounters. The turning point came when they presented intercepted communications directly linking several council members to Garvin. The room erupted in chaos, with accusations flying and alliances fracturing. Security forces moved in, detaining those implicated by the evidence. In the aftermath, the council was shaken but cleansed of its corrupt elements. The remaining members, now more cooperative, pledged to reform and work towards transparency. Jeremy and Lirail, along with their team, were hailed as heroes. The news of their success spread across planetary networks, igniting calls for similar purges in other systems. As they left the council chamber, Jeremy and Lirael shared a quiet conversation. The weight of what they had started was immense, but so was the potential for real change. Lirael felt a mix of relief and sadness. Her world was forever altered, but hopefully for the better. Returning to the Voyager, they looked out at the stars, contemplating their next move. The fight was far from over, but they had made significant progress. Together, they had changed the course of history not through conquest, but through courage and integrity. Now, they needed to ensure that these changes were lasting, a challenge they accepted with resolute determination. With the corrupt elements of Silvora's council exposed and facing justice, Jeremy and Lirael found themselves at the center of a political whirlwind. The planet was in a state of transition, and their actions had catalyzed significant shifts in governance and policy. However, the threat of retaliation by those still loyal to the ousted officials loomed large. Upon their return to Silvora, the atmosphere was charged with both celebration and tension. The citizens, aware of the corruption that had been festering within their leadership, were grateful for the exposure but anxious about the future. Lirael, once known primarily for her scientific achievements, was now also seen as a pivotal figure in the planet's new era of transparency. Jeremy, ever vigilant, coordinated closely with Silvora's security forces, which had been purged of corrupt elements, and were now led by a capable and honest commander, General Vera. Together, they planned for the defense of key installations and public forums, expecting that those resistant to change might attempt to disrupt the peace process. As they solidified their defenses, Lirael organized public symposiums to discuss the findings and the future path of Silvora. These forums were designed not just to inform, but to engage the public in the governance of their world. The response was overwhelmingly positive, with citizens from all walks of life coming forward to voice their hopes and concerns. However, during one of these gatherings, a coordinated attack was launched by a faction still loyal to the old regime. Armed and desperate, they attempted to seize control of the forum. Jeremy and General Vera's forces, prepared for such an eventuality, responded swiftly. The Voyager's crew, along with Silveron's security, managed to thwart the attack, capturing the insurgents without significant casualties. This failed uprising served as a turning point for the broader populace of Silvora, who saw firsthand the dangers of returning to the old ways. Support for Lirael's reformative initiatives grew, and the public's involvement in political processes began to reshape the landscape of governance. In the aftermath, as peace was restored and the reforms took root, Jeremy prepared to depart. His mission on Silvora was complete, but his journey as a captain exploring the galaxy was far from over. Lirael, faced with a choice between her planetary duties and her deepening bond with Jeremy, made a decisive decision. On the day of Jeremy's scheduled departure, Lirael approached him with a proposal. She wished to join him on the Voyager 
to explore new worlds and spread the message of transparency and cooperation. Her experience on Silvora had shown her the impact of knowledge and unity, and she felt compelled to continue this work on a broader scale. Jeremy, who had come to respect and care deeply for Lirael, welcomed her decision. Together, they envisioned a future where they could advocate for justice and exploration, bridging worlds and cultures. The Voyager set off once again into the cosmos, its crew bolstered by the addition of Lirael, who brought not only her scientific expertise, but a new perspective on diplomacy and governance. As they left Silvora's orbit, Jeremy and Lirael looked back at the planet, now a beacon of hope in the galaxy, its future bright with the promise of renewal and integrity. Together, they turned their gazes forward, ready to face new adventures and challenges, knowing that their combined strengths and shared values would guide them through whatever the universe held next. With Lirael by his side and the Voyager prepared to depart, Jeremy's plans took an unexpected turn. Despite the initial success in dismantling the corrupt elements within Silvora's government, the power vacuum they left behind had given rise to new threats. Rogue factions, previously kept in check by the old regime's iron grip, began to surface, threatening to plunge the planet into chaos. Realizing that their work on Silvora was not yet complete, Jeremy and Lirael decided to delay their departure. With General Vera's forces stretched thin, the Voyager's crew, along with a contingent of Starborn Legion mercenaries who had remained to assist, prepared to defend the planet's capital from the insurgent forces. The city's architecture, featuring high-rise structures and floating platforms, provided a complex urban battlefield. Jeremy and Zan, reuniting for the defense, utilized the city's unique layout to their advantage. They established defensive positions and deployed drones for surveillance, creating a network of intelligence that gave them a strategic edge. As the insurgents launched their assault, Lirail's technological prowess once again proved invaluable. She implemented a citywide defensive grid that used the planet's own energy resources to power shields over key districts, protecting civilians and critical infrastructure. Meanwhile, Jeremy led tactical squads on the ground, coordinating with Zan's mercenaries to repel the attackers. The battle raged through the streets, with both sides suffering casualties. However, the discipline and superior tactics of Jeremy's allied forces gradually turned the tide. Using non-lethal yet highly effective weaponry designed by Lirael, they managed to incapacitate many of the insurgents, minimizing loss of life and encouraging some factions to surrender. In a decisive move, Lirael and Jeremy targeted the insurgents' command center, a commandeered communication hub that directed the rogue factions. Together they infiltrated the hub, confronting the insurgents' leader, a charismatic yet ruthless figure who had exploited the unrest for his gain. With the command center secured and their leader captured, the remaining insurgent forces lost their cohesion and will to fight. Jeremy's strategy of targeting the head of the snake proved effective, and soon after, the major hostilities ceased. In the aftermath of the battle, Silvora's citizens began to emerge from their shelters, witnessing the extent of the sacrifice made to protect their freedoms. The planet's council, now more representative of the populace, took steps to integrate members of the subdued factions, offering amnesty and a voice in the new government in exchange for their cooperation. Jeremy and Lirael addressed the people of Silvora in a broadcast from the city square, calling for unity and vigilance. They emphasized the importance of community and resilience in the face of adversity, pledging continued support as Silvora rebuilt its society. Their message resonated, not just on Silvora but across nearby systems, where news of their success against corruption and tyranny spread, inspiring other worlds to examine their governance and seek reform. With the immediate crisis resolved, Jeremy and Lirael finally prepared to leave Silvora, their bond strengthened by the trials they had endured together. Their next destination was unknown, but they were certain that their journey together was just beginning, armed with hope and a commitment to making the galaxy a safer, more just place. As Jeremy and Lirael prepared to leave Silvora, the planet had begun to stabilize, with the seeds of a new and hopeful era taking root. Civic engagement was at an all-time high, and the Planetary Council, 
invigorated by fresh leadership and a newly empowered populace, was committed to continuing the reforms that Lirael and Jeremy had helped catalyze. The day before their departure, the council organized a ceremony in honor of Jeremy, Lirael, and the Voyager's crew. The event was held in the Grand Plaza of Silvora's capital, under the open sky and the gentle glow of the planet's twin moons. Citizens from all over the planet attended, eager to show their gratitude to those who had fought for their future. During the ceremony, Council Leader Mara, a wise and compassionate figure who had emerged as a strong voice during the Reformations, presented Jeremy and Lirael with the Star of Silvora, a prestigious award given to those who demonstrated extraordinary bravery and service to the planet. As they accepted the award, the crowd erupted in cheers, a vibrant testament to the deep appreciation felt by the people. Jeremy took the podium, his eyes sweeping over the crowd. He spoke of the universal values of freedom and justice, and the importance of vigilance in maintaining peace. His words resonated with the audience, reinforcing their commitment to safeguarding their society's new principles. Lirael, following Jeremy, addressed the crowd in her native Silvoran language, her voice carrying both strength and emotion. She spoke of the unity and resilience demonstrated by her people and the lessons learned from the stars, how diversity and cooperation could lead to a brighter future. Her speech, heartfelt and inspiring, drew tears and applause from those who had seen their world transformed. As the ceremony concluded, the sky lit up with a spectacular display of fireworks, symbolizing the dawn of a new era for Silvora. Jeremy and Lirael, hand in hand, watched the colors burst against the night sky, their thoughts on the future. The following morning, with goodbyes said and promises to return made, Jeremy and Lirael boarded the Voyager. The crew, having been part of something far greater than their initial mission, felt a renewed sense of purpose. As the ship lifted off, leaving Silvora's atmosphere, the planet shrank into the distance, a bright spot fading into the vast tapestry of space. Their next destination was uncharted territory. Jeremy, now not just a captain, but a proven leader, and Lirael, a scientist turned pivotal figure in galactic diplomacy, were ready to explore new worlds and face new challenges. Together, they looked forward to spreading the message of peace and cooperation they had fostered on Silvora. The Voyager set its course towards the outer reaches of the galaxy, its crew optimistic about the adventures that lay ahead. As they ventured into the unknown, their spirits were high, buoyed by their love for each other and their shared commitment to making a difference in the cosmos. As the Voyager sailed through the star-speckled expanse of the cosmos, Jeremy and Lirael took a moment to reflect on their recent adventures. Their lives had intertwined under extraordinary circumstances. And now, as they stood side by side on the deck of the ship, they looked forward to their shared future. The galaxy was vast, with countless mysteries and opportunities. With Silvora now stable and thriving, they were free to explore these possibilities. Their mission had evolved from simple exploration to a broader quest for peace and understanding among the diverse cultures of the galaxy. Lirael, her curiosity as vibrant as ever, was eager to study new technologies and civilizations. Her expertise, once confined to the laboratories of Silvora, would now benefit worlds beyond her own. She planned to document their journeys, hoping to compile a comprehensive archive of their discoveries. Jeremy, inspired by the changes they had brought to Silvora, saw their mission as a chance to promote diplomacy and cooperation. With Lirael's scientific acumen and his strategic prowess, they were a formidable team, capable of navigating not only the physical challenges of space, but the intricate dynamics of interstellar relations. As they charted their course, their first destination was the nebulous region known as the Vale of Taranis, a place rumored to contain ancient artifacts of a long-lost civilization. The potential for groundbreaking discoveries there was enormous, both scientifically and historically. During their journey, the Voyager encountered a drifting spacecraft, its origins unknown. Showing no signs of life, it presented an eerie mystery. Jeremy and Lirael decided to investigate, donning their suits and boarding the vessel. 
Inside, they found technology unlike anything they had seen, a fusion of mechanics and biotechnology, suggesting an advanced civilization that had somehow evaded the broader galactic community's notice. The ship contained data archives in a cryptic language, which Lirael took upon herself to decipher. Her breakthroughs in understanding the alien script led them to the realization that this civilization, though apparently extinct, had once spanned multiple systems, their technology harmoniously blended with their biology. This discovery posed new questions. What had led to their disappearance? Could their technology offer insights into sustainability and coexistence with technology? Jeremy and Lirael documented everything, knowing that their findings could have profound implications. As they left the ghost ship behind, the coordinates in the recovered data pointed them towards a living world, one that might hold survivors of this enigmatic race, or at least more clues to their fate. The potential for a diplomatic and cultural exchange excited them both, epitomizing the essence of their journey. Back aboard the Voyager, as they approached their next destination, Jeremy and Lirael shared their thoughts about the universe's interconnectedness. Each world, each civilization, was a piece of a larger puzzle. By understanding others, they not only broadened their knowledge but also deepened their appreciation for the diversity of life and intelligence. As the Voyager glided into orbit around a vibrant blue planet, Lush and teeming with life, Jeremy and Lirael prepared for yet another encounter. With each new world, they hoped to bring back a piece of knowledge, a fragment of understanding that could benefit the galaxy. Their adventure, born from a rescue in the dark reaches of space, had blossomed into a profound partnership, exploring the unknown and advocating for unity. Together, Jeremy and Lirael faced the future with open minds and hearts ready to bridge worlds and cultures, their love and mission intertwined beneath the infinite stars.